Welcome back, scholars, to our, what is this, fourth lesson in our polynomial sketching unit. There are a few topics in pre-calculus that are essential to your success in calculus and more advanced mathematical courses. This topic in particular is fleshed out in an entire chapter in calculus. So what we're about to embark on over the next two days is critical, critical. Um, in calculus, you'll use calculus-based concepts to pinpoint um, algebraically the graphical lo locations of maximums and minimums and where the function is increasing and decreasing and its various applications in our current world. So without any further ado, uh, if you were if you were listening to my rant, uh, you could have read the learning objective. But let's get into today's content. All right, so we have these two functions here, two different polynomial functions, uh, obviously graphically behaving differently. I would like for you to generate some discourse with your peers and uh, decide two things that you notice and two things that you wonder. Which brings us to our first exploration into the end behavior of different polynomials. So within this table, you have five different polynomial functions. I will uh, complete a few rows so you can see that there are different outputs uh, based on the function. So I'll do negative one and one. If we have uh, y equals x squared plus one, I substitute a negative 1 into that function, my output would be 2 for both negative 1 and 1, and the same holds true for the function of x to the fourth plus 1. Now, with our cubic x to the third plus 1 and our fifth degree function, when we substitute negative 1 into the function, negative 1 to the third power is negative 1, plus 1 is 0. However, when we substitute a positive value into the function, 1 cubed is 1 plus 1 is 2. And that same behavior occurs with our fifth degree function. So your task is to complete the rest of the table and then select one of these functions. You can deter you can state which one you are, you know, graphing. I'm going to graph x to the fourth plus 1. Right, it's there. Then take your um, sketch tool and draw us whatever you think um, the behavior of the function is based on these values. This idea of end behavior oops, uh, involves this idea of using values of x that are extremely large. So here our table is capped at both negative 1,000 and 1,000. Values that you can definitely make an argument are large um, but um, you know we're looking for how is the function behaving when x continues to grow without bounds so we get a thousand ten thousand hundred thousand a million one million uh, ten million one hundred million one billion right we're not gonna be able to um, you know create graphs that are that comprehensive so um, functions over time begin to uh, display similar tendencies um, we're going to continue to reinforce and bring home this idea of factored and standard form. So determine whether the polynomial given here is in factored or standard form. Um, after you've decided what is the degree of the polynomial, what are the zeros of the function, and then you are tasked with rewriting the polynomial into its opposite form. Note, when you decide whatever that form looks like, we are going to take your polynomial and substitute it in accordingly to our next slide where you will determine which term within the expression. So this expression has an x to the third term. If you hit the little tilde key next to the 1, you'll be able to type math font and 4. I will tell you right now that that is not the polynomial. Okay. And when I substitute 0 
into each of these terms, I can clearly see that 4 is the largest um, value at x is 0, um, so on and so forth. After the, completing the table, you'll be able to use the data to help you to help inform you uh, what the end behavior is of this polynomial. Now, this slide kind of gives away some information about the previous polynomial. So, if you made a mistake, you can clearly identify it. But I'd like to know how is the end behavior affected if the leading term was 20x to the fifth instead of 2x to the fifth. Is it affected? Is it not affected? You decide. Let's let's build some dialogue with your peers. And then how can we change the term 5x to the fourth in order to change the end behavior of the polynomial? So that kind of gives away uh, some hints as to what the polynomial should be. Um, but yeah, once again, it's part one, so we're just exploring. Um, nothing really concrete yet. That'll come in part two. So let's build some dialogue. That'll lead to a fruitful discussion while we're together in class.